Hi. Now, in this question, we've got to solve this pair of simultaneous equations. But unlike the equations we've had before, where they were both linear, like this one here, x plus y equals 3, this one up here isn't a linear equation. It's got an x squared in, it's got a y squared in. It hasn't got the pattern structure of the form ax plus by equals c. So what we need to do is another method of solving these kinds of equations where we cannot eliminate the variables by addition or subtraction. So how do we do these? Well, we number our equations 1 and 2 as usual. And we look at the easier of the two equations. Normally it's, say, this one here, the linear one. And we make either x or y the subject. Whatever you feel is easier to work with. So, looking at this, I could make x the subject by subtracting y from both sides. So, I tell the reader what equation I'm going to be turning to, and in this example, it's from 2. So, I'd write then from 2. From 2, I'm going to make x the subject. So, therefore, x would equal 3 minus y. And I number this equation 3. So what I'm going to do now is substitute x equals 3 minus y into the other equation that I didn't use here. So I've used 2, so I must substitute x equals 3 minus y into equation 1. So if I just say sub equation 3 into equation 1, what I'm doing is replacing any x here then with 3 minus y. So what we've got then is therefore 3 minus y all squared. We need to put this in brackets because we've got a couple of terms here for x. 3 minus y then all squared. Then we just put plus y squared equals the 5. Now, I didn't have to make x the subject. I could have just as easily made y the subject. y would have equaled 3 minus x. But I would have then had to have gone on and substituted that value, y equals 3 minus x, into here. So I'd have had x squared plus all of 3 minus x, all squared equals 5. And I would suggest that you do experiment with this. Try different ways of solving these equations. It's the only way, really, to gain confidence. Anyway, so what I've done then is sub 3 into 1. Got this equation, which is now totally in y's, and I should be able to solve it. So all I need to do is just expand the brackets. I'll write 3 minus y all squared as 3 minus y times another 3 minus y. Although we should be able to expand it straight off. OK, so expanding this now, what we get is 3 times 3, 3 squared in other words, which is 9. We get 3 times minus y, and then we get minus y times 3 here. So we get twice minus 3y, a total of minus 6y. And then we get the last term squared, minus y times minus y is plus y squared. OK? And then we have the last term here on the end, plus y squared, and that equals 5. So if we group up our terms, we've got 2y squareds here, so therefore 2y squared. We've got minus 6y. And knowing that this is a quadratic equation, because it's got the y squared in, we need to rearrange this and make it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So we've got 9 subtract 5, which is going to be plus 4. And that would equal 0. Now that I've got a quadratic equation, I notice that each of the terms can be divided through by 2. So we could thin this out by dividing all through by 2. And that would give us y squared 
minus 3y plus 2 equals 0. So what I'd want to do now is solve my quadratic equation and I can do that by factorizing. This factorizes, if it didn't factorize I could use the quadratic formula but it does factorize into two factors here okay and it equals 0. Those two factors are going to be a y and a y and then it's going to be a minus 1 and a minus 2. If you check this out, you can see it expands out to y squared minus 3y plus 2. So that means that each of these factors must be equal to 0, y minus 1 equals 0, or y minus 2 equals 0. And from this, I can find out what y is, because if I add 1 to both sides, I therefore have y equals 1, or if I add 2 to both sides here, y equals 2. Now that I've got my y values, I can substitute these values into any one of my equations. But the equation that is the easiest to work with is equation 3, because it is already rearranged to give me what x is. So that's the one I'm going to use. Okay, Substitute into 3 these values. So we'll just say then that when y equals 1, all right, then x will equal 3 minus 1. Okay, and 3 minus 1 is 2. Let's do it for when y equals 2. So when y equals 2, again if we substitute that into equation 3, we end up with x equaling 3 minus 2. 3 minus 2, which is clearly 1. And we should summarize our answers. We've therefore got x equals 2, writing the x first. I'll show you why in a moment, why it's kind of important to do that. x equals 2 and y equals 1. Or we've got another solution, and that is x equals 1 and y equals 2. So we've got two sets of solutions. And why is this? Well, remember that when you're solving simultaneous equations, it's actually the points of intersection of these two graphs. If we were to have our axes like so, the curve x squared plus y squared equals 5 represents the equation of a circle. Center the origin and radius the square root of 5, just a little over 2. So if I was to sketch that on, we'd get something like this. And if we take this graph, x plus y equals 3, this represents a straight line. If you were to rearrange it, you've got y equals 3 minus x, which is a line with a gradient of minus 1, and it intersects the axis at 3, 0, and 0, 3. So it's going to be a line looking something like this, x plus y equals 3. And you can see it intersects the circle at two points. And those points of intersection are the solutions to our simultaneous equation. 1, 2 and 2, 1. Okay? And that's one of the reasons why it's a good idea to write your x value first and then your y second. Because it represents the coordinates then of the points of intersection of your two graphs. Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea how we go about solving simultaneous equations by the method of substitution. And I'll just say one more time that do try this again, if you haven't, by making y the subject, y equaling 3 minus x and substituting it into your equation 1. You should end up with exactly the same solutions.